Hey, guess what? We're gonna do an art haul video. Hey everyone, these are my hands. So this is the first time I've ever done an art haul video, just for fun. I'm also going to pop a video of myself up on the screen. Ready? Hey guys. <laughs> um, and you can see I did open this because I thought everything would be in one package, but then I got a notice that another package had shipped. <laughs> so I just wanted to make sure everything was here before we got started. So the first thing I'm gonna open are the little ones. And I will start with this one because technically this did not come from Jackson's. They didn't have it in stock or maybe they don't even sell it. I've been wanting it for ages. It's been on my Amazon wish list for who knows how long, years maybe? <laughs> Since it's already opened and you can kind of see what it is, let's just go for it. This magical little device is a um, an accessory for my plein air Pochade box. It's a Gorilla Painter 6x8 thumb box, which you've seen in a few of my videos. And this is a watercolor palette that sits inside. So for me, obviously, it would be a watercolor and gouache palette. So let's take a look at it. And as I go throughout the video, I'll put prices up on the screen because don't ask me to remember anything like that while I'm unboxing something. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll make sure I get the accurate price and pop it up on the screen. So this is actually made out of a really, really durable plastic. You can kind of hear that. I thought it was metal when I first saw it, but no, it's, it's just really thick plastic. And apparently these are notorious for being extremely difficult to open. <laughs> and you know, I'm already experiencing that. They like are suctioned closed because they're, they're kind of like a stay wet palette. So instead of opening this straight away and like looking at it, I'm gonna unbox everything and put it all out nice and neat. And then we will explore each item, okay? And this package is something that I had actually should have done this ages ago. <clears throat> Practice safety when you are using a razor. Really <laughs> stuck on there. Uh, okay, let's see. <gasps> oh my gosh. Yes, there we go. So something that Jackson's does, and I don't know how many other art stores do this, Jackson's makes hand-painted swatch sheets. Uh, you can go on and get like acrylics, uh, watercolors, gouache, hand-painted samples so that you see exactly what the paint looks like in person when it's dry, as opposed to printed swatch sheets, which you know, it might vary slightly based on the printer and it might not be exactly the color you get out of the tube. So I think that this is extremely unique and an absolutely wonderful service that I'm very thankful for. And because I am getting back into doing more acrylics and I'm not a thousand percent happy with the previous brand that I was using anymore. <laughs> I want to start exploring other brands and golden acrylics obviously are like super well known and loved by so many artists. Uh, and I just really wanted to see what they looked like in person. So you can see that it comes with a little protective sheet on it so that the colors don't stick together. Obviously that would not be good. So we'll take a look at that in a second, but already I can tell how brilliant it is to have this hand painted swatch because you can see the variation in the brush stroke. And that's exactly what you need as an artist. When you're looking at swatches and you wanna know, you're trying to figure out what colors to buy, the printed ones just don't do it justice. <laughs> so. We'll set that one aside for a second. And I also got a Schmincke designer's gouache swatch sheet because 
I just am very curious. I use their watercolors and I absolutely love them. So I thought, you know, gouache could be really cool, but I couldn't get a hand painted version. So that was kind of a bummer. Uh, these are obviously printed, so it's kind of like you just take your best guess and just go for it. You just buy some tubes and see if you like it. And I did that with Windsor Newton anyway, so, you know, it was pretty, it was pretty accurate. <laughs> it's never perfect, uh, but I am really excited. I just wanted to see the range and have all of the pigment information and light fast ratings and all of that stuff. Um, yeah, just all the info in one little chart. So you may see another future art haul video, including Schmincke designer's gouache. We'll see. And lastly, we have this cute little package that I completely forgot what is, what this is. Oh yeah. <laughs> Just a few markers that I can use for signing prints and even canvases. For some reason, this one doesn't have a plastic cover and the cap was slightly off. I just want to test it really quick. Yeah, it works. Okay. So we'll explore that a little bit later. Those are the two small packages. And now let's jump into the big boy. Or girl, I don't know. Let's take that out. Um, that is a lot of paper. Good for kindling. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. So I always find it interesting how manufacturers decide to wrap things. Like, for instance, the paper was sitting on top of all the product, not surrounding it. And it's like, does that really protect it? Like, what if something hits the underside with these bottles? And I mean, actually, those are pretty, those are pretty sturdy. So I guess it's probably not a big deal. Um, okay, my feet were kind of like going numb, so I needed to change positions. <laughs> so I guess you can see what's in the package, obviously. It's not a mystery anymore. But we'll go through each item and then later we will kind of do some swatching. Oh my gosh, you guys, I am so excited about this. Okay, um, first let me explain what the whole point of this order was. I have been really wanting to do some acrylic plein air painting. Um, doing acrylics outside has a whole other host of challenges. Hi, uh, my name is Sarah Burtz. I'm here in Stonehaven, Scotland. Doing acrylics outside has a whole other host of challenges <laughs> compared to watercolor and gouache and even oil. And I had just been waiting for the right moment to decide what kind of materials I want to bring outside with me. I have acrylic paint, I have a pushad box, I have all the things, but I just couldn't get myself excited to sit down outside, you know, squeeze a bunch of paint out onto my palette because you have to bring all the tubes with you, then deal with the fact that it's permanent. It dries permanent in the palette, it dries on the brush, it dries in the water container, whatever. And it just was like, I don't know, those hurdles, I just didn't want to deal with it because plein air is hard enough as it is. <laughs> I I'm kind of doing a test with this whole setup. I have no idea if this is going to work. But I recently saw a video by a fellow YouTuber named Natasha Newton. You should all go watch her. She is so fabulous. She makes lots of art haul videos as well as swatching videos and really fun chatty paint sessions. I just adore her videos. Um, but anyway, she did a art haul video at some point where she had an acrylic marker or two. And I was like, an acrylic marker? The heck is that? And I never even thought about the fact that Posca pens are technically acrylic markers. And I own a white one purely to use as like white highlights on my paintings. Anyways, don't ask me why my brain didn't put those things together. <laughs> uh, but acrylic markers exist. 
What is an acrylic marker? This is an empty acrylic marker. <laughs> this is an acrylic marker nib. You put the paint inside the acrylic marker body and the paint flows down through the nib and you just draw with it. You can call it drawing, you can call it painting, whatever you want. These come in different sizes. As you can see, I ordered a few different sizes and they come with replacement nibs. They also come with different shaped nibs. There's all sorts of cool accessories in all different brands. I really like to look at customer reviews when I, before I buy a brand. And this brand, Montana, <laughs> Montana Markers, I don't know exactly what their whole company name is, but Montana had really, really good reviews. And because I'm just jumping into it, I wanted something affordable. These were very affordable. I think it's like four pounds per marker, but it's refillable. You know, you can use, it's like buying a brush basically. And four pounds for a brush is amazing. Uh, so that's what all of these big things are. Um, and then of course we have the paints and I ordered a few different colors of high flow acrylic because apparently in acrylic markers you want it to flow very easily out of the marker. If you use like heavy body acrylic it just won't flow. And I got a bottle of open medium which means that this is a uh, an additive that you can put in other acrylics like heavy body acrylics and make them flow much easier. And I have a ton of acrylics already, so I want to be able to make my own colors in these markers. I'll just add some of this and let it flow. These are replacement nibs. So you can see they come in little multi-packs and you can get all different sizes. And now back to these. <laughs> these are actually typically used for pastel, um, blending pastel. And usually you put <clears throat> these little fingers on like a palette knife type tool, and then you can like rub it on the pastel and blend everything really nicely. And my thought is that when you draw with an acrylic marker, it's wet and you have a little while before it dries. So while it's wet, I can use these soft sponges to blend. And I could also use my fingers, but it'll just get messy really quick. So having something like this on hand, I think would be really nice for just quickly dabbing it, blending it, and then moving on. <laughs> and lastly, we have these very, very cheap, very simple, marker containers. <laughs> so basically I would store the markers in these and I would toss them in my backpack for going outside or putting them on my shelf. So now that we are done opening things, let's move up to the desk and set everything out nicely and do some swatching and also some, I'll show you how to fill the markers and what they do when you put paint in them. <laughs> All right, let's do this. So first up, let's take a look at the Schmincke Designer's Gouache Swatch Sheet. It's pretty straightforward. It looks like pretty much all the other brands' swatch sheets. <laughs> and because it's printed, you get a general sense of what each color is. But for me, what's really useful is seeing everything laid out in one spot instead of fumbling around on the website. <laughs> and I can just quickly look at the transparency, the light fast, the color name, the pigment numbers, and all of the useful information. Of course, light fast tests should probably be done in your own studio, which is something that I started doing this year. And I will have a whole separate video about that. Um, but you can kind of just do some research before you jump into selecting your colors. So yeah, not much more to say about this one, so we're gonna move on. For the golden acrylic color swatch sheet, there's a bit more to look at because not only do we have all of that useful information, but we also get to see what they look like in person, hand-painted on this card. So we get to look at the variation in color, we get to look at the shine, just everything, the transparency. It's really, really useful to get hand-painted swatches. Look at this beautiful array of colors. Oh, I just love swatch sheets so much. <laughs> Oof, 
all these juicy turquoise colors. Oh my gosh. Here we have the Gorilla Painter watercolor box again. Now this sits inside of my Pushad box, so I could use this on its own, but I'm gonna probably leave it in the Pushad box. There we go. <laughs> oh, okay, so it's good to know that it has such a tight seal because again, it's gonna be used for plein air painting and I don't want anything to leak. And I also wanna make sure that my paints stay wet between sessions, like if I, go paint in one spot and then I want to move to another spot. I don't want the paint to dry out between that. And gouache tends to dry really quickly outside. Having a little sealable palette is going to be a big upgrade for me outside. I won't leave you wondering what it looks like in action. So this is this is the Gorilla Painter 6x8 thumb box. I think this is their smallest size, but I got this one because it fits in my backpack. This wooden tray comes with it and I tape a piece of palette paper to this so that I get a little bit of more of a smooth mixing surface and that works pretty good but I have just really been wanting something that I could seal because obviously if I put this in my backpack and tilt it if anything of if anything on here is still wet it's gonna slide everywhere or it's just gonna dry completely between when I'm moving around So it's made specifically to fit in this Pushad box, but obviously it would fit in a bigger Pushad box if you have one. I was having trouble finding a small enough palette that seals for this Pushad box with an open mixing space. There are some out there with little wells in them where you pour your paint, but I prefer to mix on a big open space. <laughs> so I needed something exactly like this. That's why I decided to go with the brand name. But you know, if you know of anything else out there that fits in this box, do leave it in the comments for others. So I'm not exactly sure if I would store this in the Pushad box or just toss this in my backpack between sessions because usually this is full of my paints and brushes and other stuff. And when it's closed, I don't think it will close. <laughs> Let's give it a try though. Oh, it does close. Well, there you go. <laughs> there is your solution. Now you just toss this in your backpack. Next up, we have the three fine liner markers, which I bought specifically for doing signatures and stuff on prints and canvases. And I just wanted something a little bit fun. This is a gold and then we have a bronze and a white. Let's just use a piece of scrap paper. You usually have to pump these types of markers just a little bit. If I go really fast, it kind of skips the paper there and you can't really see the straight, the full line. So I'd have to be careful with that. But if I go straight down and I kind of go slow, I get a really nice solid line. So if I was signing it, I just have to make sure my marker is pointing down. Ooh, they kind of smell like um, like alcoholic markers. Ooh, that's nice and metallic, obviously, because that's the point. This one's a little easier to use um, from the side, although they're both they're definitely better if you point straight down. And if I go too fast, I'm obviously going to end up with like some line skippage. Is that the, the technical term? There we go. I was starting to worry. So yeah, this is a nice like bronze, bronze color. This one is not doing so great. Like it works when I pump it down, but then as soon as I start moving the line, it doesn't do anything. So if anyone has any advice for me, please let me know what I'm doing wrong. 
the other ones were really smooth and easy. On the outside, it says gloss lacquer marker. I don't really know. Maybe I will store it face down for a little while and then revisit that later. I may have received a dud, not sure. Let's move on. Okay, now we have a lot to cover in this section. I ordered 13 of these markers with 15 millimeter nibs, the really wide nibs. I ordered two of the 0.7 millimeter and three of the two millimeter. So I have a little bit of a range and then a couple of replacement nibs up here. And then of course we have the sponge applicators or whatever you want to call them. Blending sponges, I guess, would be a good term. So in this video, I'm going to fill a couple of the markers and then we'll do some tests um, and swatch out each color, I guess. And then in the future, in another video, I will do an actual painting video where I show you how I use them in a painting, which is something I have to figure out for myself. <laughs> I don't even know. Um, and then ultimately the goal is to be able to use these outside on the go toss them in my bag, go outside, do some fun painting. So you can see that little ball moving around inside. That is used for when you shake the marker, it mixes the paint for you so you get a nice coating. And the paint flows down through the tip and out through the nib. The nibs themselves are kind of like this plasticky material. And of course they are meant, when you put the paint in, you do the pumping action and apparently they hold their shape. So it's gonna be interesting. You know, you're basically drawing with a pen tip and these smaller ones. These bigger ones feel somewhere between like a hard plastic and spongy material or like almost like styrofoam, I would say. <laughs> it's really weird. Um, and once again, it works the same. And then of course we have the big boys, which I wanted some really big nibs that would feel more like brushes so that when I'm actually out there painting, I'm getting a big brush stroke. So if you hear me saying brush stroke, that's why. And the reason that some of these are in a smaller size is because they didn't have the bigger size or I just didn't know if I would like the color. So I ordered a smaller one to test it out. As for paper, I'm going to be using this Strathmore Bristol paper, which was actually recommended to me by a couple marker artists. It's not the best marker paper out there, but it works pretty well. The smaller pens will be used for white and a darker color, which I might mix with three of these colors. And then for the medium sized nibs, I'll be using the primaries. And then the bigger ones, I will do all of these colors. And then later on, I may make my own custom mixes. But the cool thing is that you can get as many of these empty markers as you want. I could fill this with one color. And then if I find that I'm not loving it, I could just add a little bit of white or a little black and just keep mixing colors in there until I make this marker my favorite marker. <laughs> I love the idea of customizing my colors in these markers. My idea for the smaller case is that eventually I'll get a few more of these smaller empty markers and fill this one up. And I know I won't be able to fit everything in here, but I didn't even know if this would work. So I wanted to test it out first. Ooh. Oh, it doesn't fit together. How cool would that be? I'm gonna see how flexible this is. pretty flexible. It just barely fits height wise, which is really good. And I don't know if I'll be able to close it. So since this won't close on its own, what I would probably do is put some Velcro right here and then be able to Velcro or a magnet or something. So basically the whole point of this is just to be able to travel a little bit easier, toss it in my bag, two, four, six, eight, ten, and I could fit 10 markers, 10 colors. That's quite a lot. Okay, our first color will be titanium white, PW6. 
So as I said, I'll be using that in one of the small ones especially, and then of course one of the big ones. But let's fill the small one to start out. Apparently you just untwist this, you open this. How do you need to have nails to do this? Oh, there we go, it just came out. And then you pour the paint inside there. So don't lose all the pieces. <laughs> The ball can come out as well, so be careful. You don't wanna be stepping on one of those. You can hear how fluid this is, which is exactly what we want. Oh, okay, we have a seal, got it. Now let's fill it. Hopefully with the backlighting, you can see it flow in. squeezes. I'm trying not to make a huge mess. It's trying to squeeze out of the top. Now we replace this. And then screw this back on. Let's go ahead and fill all the markers and then we will do the swatches. I'm going to use this studio towel to make sure I don't make a huge mess. For the other tiny marker, I'm going to do a really dark color, almost like black. So my idea is to do a combination of ultramarine, quinacridone magenta, and transparent brown oxide because those are my darker ones. And I really like to mix my colors to make a black instead of just use pure black. Pure black is also handy, but in a landscape, I definitely lean more towards mixing my own black. That didn't work. Palette knife to the rescue. Um. So I'm gonna try to do like an even mix of three, but I'm not gonna fill it all the way up in case I need to add a bit more later. It's a little better if you don't stick it in. The tip just up slightly so it doesn't touch the other colors. Okay, so that's gonna be like a slightly neutralized purple in there. I might add more of the brown or another color later, but we're gonna stick with that for now. And then, as I said, we'll wait for a little while to swatch it. As I was doing these smaller nibs, I was thinking how convenient it would be to fill these medium sized ones with grays. So, having like a dark gray, a medium gray, and a light gray. So then I could do value studies really quick outside. Liquitex Basics is my usual brand of acrylic paint. Um, but that was base that was because I could get this in Colorado really easily, really cheap. <laughs> and I just never really deviated from this brand. So I'm really excited to explore others. But this is not high flow acrylic. So in order for this to work, I need to, if I add a bit of the slow drying medium, I'm hoping that it will act very similarly to the high flow mediums. Um, I think I can actually buy high flow medium as well. Uh, but I wanted to test this out because I plan on using this in other situations as well. So let's just try it. If I ruin one marker, um, it's not the end of the world. It's just something that I learned from. This whole marker thing is a whole new world for me. Oh my gosh, see how thick that is? It doesn't even want to flow down. I'm gonna have to force that. So the idea will be to add some of this black. That was two little squeezes. And then I'll add some of the white. Okay. Well, 
let's close that, close that. I think what I should have done is pre-mix all of this in a side jar or something and then poured it into here. I have this weird marbleized thing going on, so I'm not even sure if it's gonna flow. Um, I also heard people say that you can add water. If you're using regular acrylics, you can just add a little water. This is like some kind of science experiment. Let's do a little more open because it definitely needs to be able to flow like super easily. There's going to be like a marker pro out there who's like, oh my God, Sarah, you did it all wrong. I'm going to set that aside and then we'll see how it goes during the swatching. I probably will end up buying some high flow black, but at least this will be a good test. And if anyone else out there is curious, and then, you know, we'll know for the future if we can do this. First large marker. Oh, that's so much easier. <laughs> Look at how this is gonna flow a ton. I mean, that opening is huge. So yeah, I'm gonna just... Just halfway, I guess, for now is fine. definitely wanted to get bigger versions of the primary colors because those will be used the most often. How excited are you guys to see these in action? I can't wait. So now I only have my little bottles left. Should I just dump it in like this? Maybe just save a little bit for later? I don't know. <laughs> well, we'll just go with that. Let me know if you guys are interested in a more in-depth view of these markers, like close-ups of every single part and how it works when it's... I'm not an expert in these markers, so that's kind of why I'm not telling you anything else about them. Now let's do some swatches. Let's start with our little markers first. Let's go with the white. To be able to see the white, I'm going to be using this piece of scrap tanned toned paper. <laughs> Shake it and then Seven thirty-eight. so almost 40 pumps before it started to flow. <laughs> I've heard that on un uncoated paper, it the color or um, vibrancy will be a little bit less because it soaks into the fibers of the paper. But if you use it on um, coated paper or on top of a painting, it's gonna be much brighter. You'll be actually be able to see the full, more full opacity. So I can definitely see that happening here. Like as soon as I start touching it, it absorbs into the paper. So what we could do is actually do a test of this on top of the other colors after they have dried. So let's move on to the darker color. Ultramarine, my quinacridone magenta and my transparent brown iron oxide. So once again, pumping. Whoa, that one flowed way faster. Okay. This is a really thin tip. The, the reason I like the idea of painting with markers is that I love drawing, first of all. I feel very, drawing feels way more natural to me. And if I want to fill in an area really quick, all I need to do is just press down, let it it's not like you're doing a full pump, but even just a tiny bit and you get a really thick, dark line or dark 
area. And then you could blend into it with your other markers or do this and kind of spread it out a little bit. So you get such a variety of mark making and um, value as well. So it's to me, it's just like a whole new way of drawing. It's, it's fascinating. So this Bristol paper, as I said, is not the most ideal marker paper, but I think it's coated. So that's why it works a little bit better. Custom mix. Now let's try the gray marker. I am very curious. So first we gotta pump it. Wow, that's moving much slower. I don't even know if it's gonna work. Once the tip is fully saturated, apparently it flows much easier. Okay, we have paint. <laughs> that took so long, oh my goodness. I, I really think I need to add more water to this or just buy some high flow medium or just buy the black high flow paint. I don't know, but I just wanted to try this. This is the thickness of the line, which is, but not too thick. It's a good middle ground, I think. I mean, it works technically. It's not ideal by any means but for a homemade color, not too bad. I'm gonna skip the white one for now. I will actually do the white on top of another color later so that you guys can see how opaque it is. Um, so yeah, we'll just go down the line. Starting with Benzimidazolone. I am probably butchering that. Yellow light. Uh, but it's basically a PY 175 and it's a it's the brightest yellow I could get <laughs> To me, it was the one that looked the most like lemon yellow on their website. So Yeah, let's just go one, two three The back sides working It's almost completely saturating you can see it's almost like foamy on the tip I guess because I shook it so much and I'm still pumping it a lot. But hopefully once the tip is saturated, it won't need to be disturbed as much. Um, but yeah, oh my goodness, this feels like a brush stroke, you guys. That is amazing. And I can also get really tiny marks on the edge. Wow. Okay. So there is our first big marker. Technically this is not, um, it's diary lied yellow. <laughs> what is up with these names? It's, it's it looks like orange, even though it's classified as a yellow. Um, but yeah, I bought it as an orange to use as an orange. You can see how it like seeps down into that marker tip. Oh, this is so cool. I am just amazed at how smooth and wonderful that feels. I wasn't sure how it would, if it would feel good because it felt like the styrofoam type tip but it gets really soft when the paint goes into it. Uh, this is yellow oxide, so kind of like a yellow ochre. I don't think I need to mix it or shake it as much. More on one side, I guess. There we go. Definitely don't want to be pumping it on top of a piece of like finished work that you're trying to add to. You got to do this on a scrap piece of paper. This one feels a little bit thicker or maybe just because it's darker, I can see. Ooh, there we go. That's really nice. Like really full coverage. 
you would probably struggle if you were trying to layer a lot on this paper because even just a few swipes I can feel the paper sort of start to not disintegrate well maybe it, that is the right term I don't know but if you scrubbed a lot you would probably start lifting up fibers of the paper then we have the transparent brown iron oxide really nice brown color which is different than um it's a little more red than burnt umber but since i didn't buy a red i wanted to lean in that direction with one of my colors this one's taken a while <laughs> if i hold it down it seems to help kind of like fill the the nib a little bit but again, once the nibs are totally saturated, they flow way easier from now on, from then on. So look at all that bubbling. Ooh, that one like sprayed everywhere with the, with the bubbles popping. Oh my goodness. Okay, I think that's probably good. Well, definitely transparent. I mean, look at that. You can see so much of the paper. I'm uh, curious to see how all these little bubbles are gonna dry. All of that dark brown you see are bubbles. It's like building up on the edge of my marks. So yeah, very, very transparent. I think I should get a burnt umber as well. Maybe that will be a good way to round out my earthy tones. And of course we have um, quinacridone magenta one of my all-time favorite colors. Apparently Liquitex makes a, a marker and I was curious about them as well but I couldn't find any empty ones and I really wanted to use the golden high flow but I'm gonna look into that. I might just order a couple of the Liquitex to see what they're like in comparison like see if the nibs are better or worse. <laughs> so this is kind of transparent. You can see the paper through there. So if you layered up one or two or mixed it with a more opaque color, it'd be really nice. Um, which this is definitely a mixing color. Now let's get into the blues. Yay. Ooh. I'm trying not to let the bubbles like burst everywhere and spray everywhere <laughs> so that's why i go kind of slow sometimes oh see like that splattered everywhere because the bubble burst so yeah gotta be careful with you know these might act totally different on canvas too so i'll need to do some testing on a canvas i just love the variety of of line width i can get with these it's so great marine now this color was i wasn't sure which thalo blue i wanted to order and i went with a green shade this is pb15 3 so yeah i'm as curious as you are <laughs> see how it feels very transparent just at first glance so of course this would be a mixing blue and it would only need a tiny bit. Yeah, very transparent. That was really fast <laughs> to come out of there. And finally we have teal, which is I mean, I am obsessed with turquoise everything, so. This one is actually pretty opaque. I mean, obviously you can see the paper because it's not quite fully saturated yet. Taking a little longer, are we, Teal? Okay, so love this color first of all oh my gosh mixing a little bit of white in there a little bit of green so many options oh beautiful
Once these dry, let's do a little white streak on top of each one and just see. But first, let's get it ready. So let's bump this out. What do you guys think about the whole pumping action thing? Like, it's such a strange concept from a painter's point of view, right? <laughs> I mean, I get why it has to happen. The paint has to come out and like, uh, and saturate the nib for it to flow. And if, if it, if you didn't have to pump it, the paint would just constantly flow out and that could be really bad. Okay, we're cheating. We're moving ahead to a blending exercise. So this is blending into the gray I just put down. Once again, this paper is not ideal for multiple layers. It seems to be degrading quickly the more I rub the same area, the same spot. But even just this quick little test, you can see like, yes, a gradient is possible if you're careful. But that's where these come into play. So the idea is to take one of these little fingers and even just holding it, my idea was to just be able to do this. And already you can see how incredibly smooth that is. It's not streaky anymore. So yeah, I think these will come in handy. <laughs> and then of course you can wash these if you're quick about it. While I'm waiting for that to dry, I thought it would be fun to play with this color a little bit. So I left room in here to add more color and because it is so pink, I think I should add a bit more blue to this one as well. Oh my God, I just did to the outside. <laughs> Towel. I was trying to get a nice fancy close up and I just messed it up. Okay, now let's see if it's any better. I tend to forget how strong quinacridone magenta is. a little deeper but it's definitely a dark plum color so um, yeah I may need to even that out a little bit later but the whole point was to get a super super dark color and I definitely got it parts of these other ones are dry so let's go ahead and test the white a little bit oh okay apparently you need to be careful um, they're, they're flowing into the caps, but I thought it said you're supposed to store them on the side. Okay, don't store them on their side <laughs> because they flow into the caps. Now I have a huge mess to clean up in the caps. It's never easy, you guys, getting used to a new medium. Well, you can see a little bit of the yellow showing through. And when that dries, it'll be more obvious, I guess. Just want to do a little test mark on each of them. Like if I was doing a highlight on the water or something, that's kind of, I wouldn't wait a really long time for it to dry. Oh my goodness. I feel like chaotic because this is so messy and like, there's so many moving parts. I don't mind if there is paint on these. Obviously it's gonna happen. I just don't want it to leak everywhere or like when I open that white, it like sprayed all over my, pa my paper. <laughs> so yeah, that's what we wanna avoid. Like these caps are definitely gonna get paint in them. No big deal, just need to make sure they don't fill up with like pools of paint. Like look at this one. Obviously that leaked immediately. And if I open this, ah. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, gonna be an issue. If you store them on their side, they may just pull out into the cap. But I swear something said that you're supposed to store them on their side. And I feel like an idiot now. I bet someone was watching and they were like, Sarah, no. <laughs> Don't do oh, they're watching like cringing the whole time. Okay, I'm gonna go clean up just a little bit because this is getting <laughs> out of hand. 
So now that I have cleaned everything up a little bit and things are starting to dry here, I was thinking that it would be good to do a whole video dedicated to doing some mixing, doing some blending, and then jumping into an actual test painting, like a landscape test painting, <laughs> instead of making this video any longer because I already feel really overwhelmed. Honestly, that's just what happens when I try a new medium. I love, ex I love sharing the experience, but I can also get super overwhelmed. <laughs> and in this case, it was just the matter of things leaking and realizing I did it wrong and like, Ah, nothing going to plan. <laughs> but at the same time, I think that's an important thing to share because if you are interested in buying something like this, but you haven't seen somebody do it, it can be intimidating. Like for me sitting here and trying things out, I'm like, yeah, so much can go wrong and I'll figure it out eventually. But I kind of wish I had watched another video of someone doing this first so that I like knew what to expect and I knew um I just like knew a little bit more about the process anyways hopefully someone out there learned something and if you're getting into the ac acrylic marker arena you can now start off on a better foot than I did <laughs> and make a little bit less of a mess. Although just saying, you're gonna make a mess. It's just expected. Anytime I've ever used anything acrylic based, I have made a mess. I used acrylic paint for most of my first couple years of painting. And just in case anyone is curious, no, this paper does not bleed through. And you can layer up a lot of paint and I don't think it'll show through because this is thick stuff. So I will put all the links to everything I use today in the description, just in case anyone needs to like look things up. And if anyone has any advice or comments or just wants to talk about their experience with acrylic markers, please do leave a comment because I am so curious. And this is the start of a new journey for me. It's not like I'm not going to be using gouache or watercolor anymore. Like I love using those and I'll never stop, but this is just an addition to and I'm very excited to see what I get to do with it. So thank you all for joining me for this very messy but honest session in the studio and I will see you all again soon for the next test video.